But today we're going to be going over a few different things, right? So first of all, we're going to go over the beginner's basics. And what that means is the four pillars of the ATM business. These are the absolute basics that you must have right now to get your ATM business started. After that, we're going to go over the five crucial requirements for any Bitcoin ATM business. Because remember, these are two different entities. And then for the finale, at the end, we're going to bring it in home. So I'm going to cover how you can actually start your ATM or BTM business and scale internationally. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Can you guys hear me? Let's see if this is working. We are using brand new software today. Again, guys, I'm Guillermo Jonas with ATMtogether.com. CRO, if you don't know who I am, I want to welcome you to this week's weekly live. We are extremely excited to have you here, guys. And let me just make sure you guys can actually hear me. Here we go. Can you guys hear me? Tabitha, that's what I'm talking about. So I have like seven different screens here. So in case you guys are wondering what I'm looking at, it is like minority report over here, right? So we're, we're all over the place. We're on YouTube, we're on Facebook, we're everywhere, guys. Now, so welcome for joining us. And I really appreciate you guys joining us today. So as you know, I'm Getem Jonas, CEO of ATMtogether.com. And this is our weekly live. Every single week on Tuesday, I don't care if it's a holiday or not, you, we have been here. We're here for the people, guys, because at the end of the day, we understand you guys are getting into the ATM business or BTM business or whatever business, but you're here. So we're loyal to you and we want to be here also. Okay. So welcome. With that being said, what I want to know is where you guys are actually located from. So comment in the comments, what city and state you guys are at right now, because I want to know exactly where we're reaching out to. So I'm in Southern California. I'm always between Mexico and actually San Diego. So I'm, I'm international guys. And we know we reach out international. So we want to know where you guys are at. Okay. So I see uh, Trevor, what's going on? Um, Liz, what's going on? We are extending Queen Keek, Arizona, Iowa, Milwaukee. Shout out to Milwaukee. Um, you guys have a decent uh, basketball team, but we won't get into that, right? So with that being said, guys, it is the new year. And what I mean by that is it's actually the first month of the new year. So I want to know, are you guys actually committed to your guys' goals? Okay. If you wrote down a goal, and if you're here about... Uh, We'll say two weeks ago, just before New Year's, you saw that podcast or that live that we had. And I mentioned, it's like, hey, at the end of the day, you got to make sure you're accountable to your goals before 2023. Okay. So if you were, and you're still on track in 2023, we are 10 days in and you know, I'm still committed. Get them. I'm still going to the gym. I'm still processing my business. I'm still doing whatever I want to do. Comment goals below. I want to see who was here two weeks ago in 2022 committed because you did comment. You're going to commit. And you're still doing it this week, all right? So comment goals below. And again, guys, we are pre-recording. This is for our YouTube channel also. So if you're watching us on YouTube, make sure you subscribe and hit the like button. And I think it's going to be like maybe up here or down here. I don't know. One of our, our video editors, she's phenomenal. She'll figure it out, okay? And if you don't know about our YouTube channel, it is youtube.com forward slash the at sign as if talking about an email, ATM together. This is your chance to get into the beginning, guys, because right now, I'm telling you right now, you're getting in basically when this Facebook group was at like 100 members. Right now, we're at like 55,000 members, and I know it seems like a lot, but the YouTube is only like 200 subscribers right now. We're going to hit a million, and I want to make sure you are one of the original subscribers, guys, so you know. You're like, you know what? I remember get him when he was still small. He still comments, and he still responds to those comments, okay? Now, with that being said, guys, because we are going to run out of time, I'm going to make this very quick for you because we have some phenomenal lessons. If you're live, like right now, you are watching this live in person. You're driving home from work. You're at home glued to the television screen. You got me blasted on the 60-inch. Comment live below. I want to know who's actually watching this live. But it's okay if you're not, if this is a replay. And what I mean by that is maybe you were busy on Tuesday at 5 p.m. Pacific time. It's okay. Everyone has their life. But you took advantage and you had accountability on yourself. You said, you know what? I'm still going to watch this. Comment replay below. Because as you know, even if it's a week from now or some of those lives, which are a year old, people still comment replay. And I respond personally just to reach out to you personally. Okay, guys? So with that being said, guys, um, this will also help us with our algorithms. And the reason I bring this up is because with Facebook, the more comments you get, the more people to reach out to. So the more people that actually get help with their businesses, because at the end of the day, there are other people that were like you, whether you have your business making you six figures a year or six figures a month, it doesn't matter. You started somewhere. We want to help the people that are starting. 
Okay. Because at the end of the day, you got to remember guys, momentum is what drives your success. The momentum is what you start with right now and you keep going because at the end of the day, you understand discipline will fade straight up guys. What I've found is sometimes I wake up, I don't want to get out of bed. Discipline will fade. Okay. Sorry. Mo motivation will fade guys, but it's the discipline itself that will keep you going through the process. Cause there's, there's times that suck right now. It's gloomy outside. I don't want to do anything, but you know that you have to stay accountable to yourself, accountable to your why. Understand the why, why you're starting your business, guys. Okay. So with that being said, got a few announcements, guys, and I have them written down here. So first of all, all right, first of all, we have some premium locations. Our location finder team reached out. They're like, get them. You need to get more people in these areas because we got some locations. In case you didn't know, we run advertisements. And what that means is people will reach out to us and say, hey, I want an ATM. I want a Bitcoin ATM at my location. What can you do for me? And we're just like, we, we don't know anybody. So if you're in one of these cities, make sure you comment me below, right? Comment me. And what that means for me is that you are actually in one of these cities and you want to take one of these locations. So New York City is one of them. Detroit, Michigan, Dallas, Fort Worth or DFW, as you guys call it, the locals. DMV, right? And you guys, if you're from the area, you know. If you don't know, you don't know. It's too bad. And Miami, Speaking of Miami, guys, if you're one of these cities, comment me below. But as you know, we're more than likely going to be moving ATM together to Miami. So if you're in that area, we're actually going to see that comment and we're going to have some lunch with you or something, guys. OK, now, with that being said, two more announcements, guys, and you need to pay attention to this. OK, so first of all, if you didn't see my Instagram post and you are in Canada right now, pay attention. We now have full automation in Canada. What that means for you, complete done for you service, and I'll break that down a little later, is now available in Canada. We are the only ones in the world able to offer this. It's, it's, it's special times in 2023, guys. And we also have something special we're going to announce next week. So you better pay attention. But something we have in the works, we're signing contracts. We're going we're gonna to bring some great value for you guys, okay? So if you're in Canada and you thought about getting the ATM business, there, there's no time like never. This is the beginning stage. And second of all, on January 23rd, guys, we are about to be on a special podcast, okay? We haven't announced it, but I'm letting you guys know first so you can get the agenda down, right? You can write this down in your calendar. So January 23rd, which is Monday, how many of you guys have heard of Fresh and Fit? Fresh and Fit, the podcast, I think they have like, let me see, about 1 million followers on their YouTube. They're, they're a pretty big channel, right? Myron and Fresh, they have a phenomenal show. So... We decided, you know what, it's time to, to go back for our presence. Round two. As you know, Paul was in September. I was in the side sofa. It was like Jerry Springer. I was just listening. It was, it was craziness. But this time, we're going to have a phenomenal podcast, January 23rd, which is a Monday. It's called Money Mondays, right? We're going to talk about the Bitcoin ATM business. I'm going to talk about my law enforcement experience, military coming from a special operations team, and just, just craziness. Paul's going to be there and we have somebody else special that's going to be there. So if you're going to get on that podcast and listen in, comment YouTube below. Just so we will personally send you the link to them and we'll send you a reminder also, guys. January 23rd, comment YouTube below. It's going to be phenomenal, guys. Okay. So with that being said, do this. Let me get into the agenda, guys. So this one's going to go back pretty quick. So today we're going to be going over a few different things, right? So first of all, we're going to go over the beginner's basics. And what that means is the four pillars of the ATM business. These are the absolute basics that you must have right now to get your ATM business started. I don't care if you are, have all this money. I don't care if you have business experience. These are the basics that you absolutely must know every ATM deployer. Okay. After that, we're going to go over the five crucial requirements for any Bitcoin ATM business. Because remember, these are two different entities. You have your cash ATM, Bitcoin ATM on one side. They can stand right next to each other, but they're whole different ways to start those businesses. Okay. And then for the finale at the end, we're going to bring it in home. So I'm going to cover how you can actually start your ATM or BTM business and scale internationally. How many people do you know that even have an international business? I, I know a few people. That's it. You're going to be one of the few people that are able to do that internationally. Okay. So this is going to be a great presentation, guys. All right. So if you're excited to learn the basics of your ATM business, right? 
And if you're excited for this lesson, I need to know right now. So I need you to comment pillars below. And I'm talking like four pillars. So comment pillars below. Let me know exactly who actually wants to hear about this lesson, guys. All right. So let me get this ready for you right now. And don't mind if you hear some sounds. I'm trying out some new software. So I got some uh, ex exciting noises and uh, presentations for you. All right. So let's do this. Cool. All right. So the four basics or the, the pillars, as we call it in the ATM business. All right. So a little story about myself. Um, I started off in a, I guess you could say a nine to five background. So the moment I turned 18, I actually joined the United States Marine Corps, right? Any military veterans out there, thank you for your service. Really appreciate it. Okay. So I decided, you know, a few, literally a few days after I turned 18, I said, you know what? College isn't for me, right? I just understood I wasn't meant for that, you know, higher education life. And it wasn't because I wasn't capable. I actually got accepted into uh, UC Berkeley. I don't know if you guys are familiar. That's in California, but I turned it down. And what I found was, you know what? I just, I just knew it wasn't for me. I knew that I needed to get into business, business somehow, some way, but I just didn't have a marketable skill. Okay. So I thought to myself, you know what, until I figure out what I need to do personally, I'm in a weird place in my life. I'm just going to join the military, whatever. So I actually signed up for the United States Marines, turned 18, did some service there, got out dead end jobs, guys. I was just, I wasn't in the best place, right? I was working all these dead end jobs. I wasn't in the best position in life. I was actually $50,000 in credit card debt. I was literally swiping credit cards to actually fund my lifestyle. And that's like one of the worst things you could do. Somehow, some way people, people think I'm crazy. I had really good credit. And the reason why I was, I, I made those minimal payments. I would literally owe like 20 K on one card and I'd pay $35 a month and just drowning in debt guys drowning. But as long as you keep making those minimum payments, they don't care. They're like, cool, we'll keep your credit up there. Just keep paying us some more, right? So I didn't know what the end was. I truly did not know what the end of this was. I had no idea what I was going to do. I said, I have no marketable skills. What do I do? Well, somehow, some way, I actually ran into a cop. Became hired as a law enforcement officer in the Bay Area. Promoted very quickly. I worked my ass off. Just like how you guys are hard workers, I worked my ass off. And that's one of the first lessons I learned. When I say the four pillars of the ATM business, I can go into whatever, the technicalities, but the main thing you need to know, it's work ethic. The first thing we hate hearing is people that say, I just want everything to be perfect. At the end of the day, guys, when you get into business, you need to understand what can go wrong will go wrong. It is controlled chaos behind the scenes, guys. It is straight up chaos. Even multi-million dollar businesses. I'm talking about Coca-Cola, Nike, all these big name businesses you think are just hunky-dory. No, no, no. It's, it's controlled chaos. When you go in that boardroom, it's a lot of yelling. It's people throwing stuff at each other. They're just, uh, just craziness. Okay? So you have to understand when you go into business, you have to change your mindset. You have to have the right mindset for business. It sucks. Whenever, whenever I mention motivation will fade and discipline will get you there, I'm trying to get you ready for business. Because at the end of the day, guys, if you think it's going to be perfect for you, it's not going to work out straight up. It's not going to work out. Just stick to your job. No offense, but that's probably the better route for you. But if you're ready to understand that the leverage or the actual effort you put in can leverage into a significantly high upside. And what I mean by that is your effort can easily make you millions of dollars. Business is for you. If you have that feeling at work where you're like, man, I'm working harder than everybody. I'm smarter than everybody. And that's not to judge anybody, but you're like, I'm smarter than all my coworkers. Business is probably for you because your efforts will directly correlate to your success. If you treat it like a race, what I mean this, if you treat it like a race, not a marathon, and you say, I'm going to run as fast as I can for as long as I can, you will significantly outpace the competition. And guess what? You ran so fast and so far at the end of the day, what's going to happen? You can even walk and you're still going to win that marathon. You're going to be so far ahead of the competition because you put the effort in that you will win. That's all business is, guys. You're creating a marketable, sellable service. You find a problem and you fix it. When it comes down to the cash ATM business, guess what that is? People need quick access to cash, whether that's outside a strip club, whether that's at a grocery store, or whether that's in a gas station in the middle of nowhere. They need access to cash, and that's this problem you're solving. But the benefit is this. You have less time involved because at the end of the day, think about the business. All you're doing is refilling a machine. Okay. So let me get into the lesson, guys. When it comes down to the four pillars of the ATM business, we call it the four pillars. It is the four foundations you must have for any ATM business. Okay. The first one, and I switched this up a little bit to, to keep you guys on your toes. Okay. It's going to be your LLC. 
Your LLC is extremely important, guys. It is, stands for your limited liability company, okay? I get this question all the time. They say, get them, get them, get them. Get them, get them, get them. Take a second, answer this question. They say, why do I even need an LLC? And I'm like, it blows my mind. I'm like, there's so many reasons, guys. First of all, protection. You have to protect yourself or protect your neck. If you guys are old school hip hop fans, you know what I'm talking about, all right? It comes down to protection. I'm not saying you're going to do anything wrong, but at the end of the day, we live in the US. It's a litigious society. If you're an attorney out there, you know what I'm talking about. People love to sue for anything. Remember back in the day when that lady at McDonald's drank, got that hot cup of coffee, which was obviously hot. And that, I mean, it was a benefit. You got a hot cup of coffee and they sued McDonald's for the coffee being too hot. At the end of the day, you got to understand that's just how it is. Somebody may trip next to your ATM. Somebody may get a paper cut from your ATM. Anything could happen. I'm not saying it will, but you just got to understand how it is. And here's the thing. It's not just the ATM business. Say, for example, you're making $5,000 a month from your ATM business and you're in some other high profile industry, you're in some other job, you have some other business, somebody trips on your sidewalk in front of your house and they sue you. What are they going to go after? They're going to go after all your assets. If your ATM business is not in the name of a business and it's in your personal name, I got some bad news for you. Somebody else about to be making $5,000 a month and they're going to say, thank you. Thank you for giving me this money. So the first thing you want to do, guys, is form your business. I don't care if it's an LLC, S Corp, C Corp. The reason why I say LLC is because it's the simplest for you to make, guys. Think about it. Simplicity equals success. Complexity does not scale. Okay? So we're all about imperfect action, speeding things up. So LLCs are going to be the fastest. So as I'm actually going through this lesson, guys, I have a free guide for you. And I'm, I'm talking about absolutely free, no gimmicks, nothing. I made it for you guys so you can form your business as soon as possible. If you want a copy of this guide, comment LLC below, guys. One of our team members will get to you. If they don't, I'll personally message you a copy of this. It is our free guide for you to personally open your actual LLC for the ATM business. Comment below, guys. Let's see this. Boom. And uh, Alexa, she has third degree burns, though. I didn't know about that. That's, that's wild. See, there's, there's always more to a story when it comes to McDonald's, right? So, so let's get into this, guys. So LLC, okay? So it stands for your limited liability company. When you're doing that with the ATM business, the reason why I say it is it's speed at the end of the day. You want to get as fast as possible your business up and running because you want to get momentum. Like I mentioned before, you want to start generating revenue. Focus on activities that generate revenue. The LLC name, the LLC address, all it doesn't really matter. You can always change that letter. Get a freaking LLC, guys. The main reason why is professionalism, liability to actually protect yourself, and it helps for contracts. So when it comes to the ATM business, what you want to do is you form your LLC. You want to have your NAICS code, all right? The team members that are watching this right now, make sure you type this out for everybody. The NAICS code, and it doesn't matter what this stands for. This is the code that classifies your ATM business. It is impossible to find. It's 522320, guys, all right? The NAICS code for the ATM business is 522320. What that is, is a code that the banks will ask for sometimes. And they'll ask you, why is your business not classified properly? You don't want to put teaching. You don't want to put vending. You don't want to put anything. For the cash ATM business, you want to be truthful. It is 522320. Just write it down. When you form your LLC following that guide, you will thank me later, guys. All right? Second of all. When it comes to the four pillars of the ATM business, you have your LLC formed. That's going to be very quick. You file online. It should be free unless you're paying for the state filing fee. That's the only service you pay for, guys. Then you get your EIN. That stands for your employer identification number, EIN number. Get it for free. Make sure you go to irs.gov, guys. The reason I say this is there's a lot of copycat websites. They're trying to take your hard-earned money away from you. So what I want you to do is make sure you go straight to the government website. It's open from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern time, guys. 24 seven, basically get your EIN number and you're set. You have the foundation. Okay. Then what you're going to do is actually go to the bank and make sure you're writing these steps down guys. I'm literally giving you the step-by-step -step plan to launch your ATM business right now, right after this live, you can pop off, watch the replay and you'll be up and running in like 30 days. Okay. So you want to get your bank account. So here's the thing. When it comes to the ATM business, the business checking account is almost impossible to get straight up. California, for example, guys, it is impossible to get an ATM business checking account. I'm, I'm not going to say impossible, but it's near impossible. The reason why is because a few bad apples in the industry ruined it for everybody. You guys have seen Ozark. You guys have seen Narcos. You guys have seen all these different shows. Well, those are based off of real people and real events. 
People to this day are doing dumb things when it comes to banking. So now they put a bad apple in the, in the mix of all these apples. It tarnishes the reputation. So it's hard to find. So when it comes down to the business checking account, you want to actually open an account and the bank has to know it's going to be for an ATM business. And the reason I mentioned this is because the moment they find out, they will shut you down. And I'm going to give you, I'm going to spit some game for you guys right now. It's very detailed information. Forgive me if it's too detailed, but I want you to understand the reason why. Because once you understand the reason why, you're extremely successful. So when it comes down to the ATM business, okay, any business in general, think of this. When you swipe your credit card at a gas station, at a restaurant, whatever, you know how you get those points? And you know how the actual issuing agency or the actual card issuer, like Visa, MasterCard, Amex, whatever, how they recognize that? They say, hey, Jeff, you went to a gas station, so we're going to give you 3% back or whatever. It's because of merchant codes or classifications, okay? So the banks all communicate together. They're all in cahoots with each other, guys. So they all know who owns what merchant, this is this, where it came from, the business name, all that good stuff. So think of this way. When a processor is sending the money back to your business checking account, don't you think they're going to know what type of company that is? Especially when it's a big name processor. That's why. So what's going to happen is you're going to get multiple deposits in your business checking account that you told them was for whatever business. You're going to get a call from the bank. You're going to get a, sometimes even a letter. They're not even personal anymore, guys. They send you a letter and they say, hey, you need to tell us why you're getting these deposits. Or they just shut down your account. That's how bad it is nowadays. They're like, we don't even want to talk to you. They shut down your account. But that's not it. You might think, oh, I'll just open a new account. No, 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 no. Here's what happens. There's this thing called the check system, right? It's C. It's a C H E X check system. All right. What that is, is basically like a social security number for banking guys. It is extremely important. This is actually more important than your social. So the banks will check this system only they have access to, and it has a record for you. It's almost like, you know, your credit score. Think of that, but it's, it's, it's way more detailed. So that bank will enter in a bad remark, just like you went to a bad Airbnb and the next bank will check that system. And when they tell you, no, you can't open an account. They're not going to tell you why. They just say, we don't want to offer you an account, but you know why. So be truthful with the bank. Okay. Now I have this script for you guys because I know how hard it is to get a bank. Who wants to know exactly what to say to get a business checking account in the ATM business? I want to know. Okay. If you want to know, comment bank script below. I want to see who's actually paying attention. And if you're driving, it's okay. Leave this on hands free. I promise I'll still say it. All right. Comment bank script below guys. See this? I don't see any comments. I see a hand, but I don't know if you're talking about the bank script. All right. Let's see. Oh, there we go. Okay. All right. So when you want to open a business checking account in the ATM business, right? This is exactly what you do. You call a small bank or credit unit, small banks in the industry. Okay. Big banks, like I'll say that the big three, I won't say their name. They won't allow ATM business accounts. You call them and you say, Hey, this is get them with so-and-so get them's ATM services. Hey, I'm looking to open a business checking account to accept commissions for my ATM business. Okay. That's it. This is pivotal guys. This is extremely important. What they say after this is what you need to pay attention to. If they say no, then they know it's a no. Cool. Call the next business. But if they say anything other than no, you need to write. The, I'm talking guys, get your notepad like I do. And you write this down, right? You write down that bank because at the end of the day, you want to have multiple call a few banks, say the same thing, because if it's anything other than no, remember in business, anything is negotiable. Okay. So what that means is go to that bank in person, bring them your LLC paperwork, bring them the paperwork from your processing company, which I'll cover. And if you don't have this, that means you need to find a new processor. Okay. And then you bring them your EIN letter and your ID, and you should open a business checking account. If not go to the next one guys. So I'll say it again. This is Getem with um, Getem's programs, LLC. I'm looking to open a business checking account to collect commissions for my ATM business. Remember that guys, that is your key to success to find a bank. And if not, just shoot me a message. I'll personally help you find a bank. Okay. So with that being said, guys, the third pillar is going to be, it's going to be a few things, but it's going to be the processing, the ATM and the internet. I consider those all one. And the way I'm going to explain this is very simple, guys. Processing is like a network. Imagine like the toll road. And I'll get through this very quick because I am running out of time. So processing is like a toll road. Okay, It's a network that people are paying for access to. You got to get from destination A to destination B, and you got to pay to play. 
Okay. So the banks actually pay the processing company a small percentage to have access to that. So, you know, when your bank says, Hey, you get three free withdrawals for an ATM that's not in our network. The reason why is they're recouping their losses. What that means is they're trying to mitigate their losses. They're saying, Hey, we have a thousand customers. We're getting charged this much to, for them to have access to this ATM network. We're only going to allow them this many withdrawals or whatever it is. Okay. So the processing network facilitates the ATM business. What that means is you can have access to your cash wherever you want, whether that's in Iowa, like some of our um, people in this live, or whether that's in Tijuana or like right on the border, like San Diego, Chula Vista or something, right? It's for you to have access to your money. Okay. So when it comes down to processing, you need to have a processing company in the ATM business. If you want to become an independent, independent ATM deployer. Okay. So what that means is you need to go under somebody. Somebody is plugged into this network and they give you access. They say, Hey, get them. You're going to have five ATMs. You're going to have 10 ATMs. I will provide the processing for you. I'll connect you to this network because you can't go directly. You're not an ISO. And I'm dropping gems for you guys. You better write down all these acronyms to do your research. Okay. So this is what happens. Some, some big name processing companies, they try to get you. And this is how they get you guys. You guys remember the old school cell phones? I still have my iPod touch, but remember when you had a, a cell phone, right? Or maybe it was the T-Mobile sidekick. You guys remember that? You flipped it up and you had your Fay five. All right. I'm, I'm dating myself. So check this out. Remember when they had those two-year contracts and then they had what's called an early termination fee. So what that means is they will lock you into a contract and they'll charge you if you try to break it. Some of these ATM companies try to still do that. It, they, they act like it's like 1999, but they don't know that you are watching this live and you're armed with information. You're like, uh-uh, I talked to get him. He said no contracts. So the first lesson when it comes to processing, do not get a contract absolutely have no contracts when it comes to processing. If a processor is going, doing good business, they don't need to lock you down. There's no reason for you to leave. When it comes down to ATM together, we say no contracts because we want to fight for your business. Every processor, whether you're working with us or not, should offer you the same thing. If they're not, it's a red flag. That means they're scared. They're operating off of a scarcity mindset. They know there is a flaw in their system that you're going to find out about and want to leave a month, two months later. Okay. So no contracts. In addition to that, guys, there should be free processing. You need to keep all of your profits. Full transparency in the ATM business, guys. Okay, There's two sides of processing. There is the client side, right, or the customer that goes in the machine, and then there's the back end. A few cents per transaction. For, the facil for that actual network to work, there's a fee that gets charged. So if they're trying to get it from both sides, they're just they're bending you over straight up. So you need to have free processing, guys. If you're not keeping all your fees, that is a major red flag. Send me a message. I will review that contract for you. And I'll, I'll give you straight up personal advice. Like, hey, you should leave or maybe you should stay. Okay. So remember that, guys. Free processing. In addition to that, no contracts. Here's the third thing when it comes to processing. And this rolls into everything. Okay. Discounted ATMs. Okay. Your ISO, right? Independent sales organization should offer you discounted ATMs. If they're not... If they're not matching or beating the market price, there is a problem, guys. You need to move on. Keep it pushing, all right? As we, as we used to say back in the day, keep it pushing. Find a processor that will give you discounted rate for ATMs. They should also include support because at the end of the day, it's an ecosystem. They're fighting for your business. In addition to that, and I hope you're writing this down, guys. I know this is a lot of information, okay? You want them to offer the internet for your machine also. This grows into my next point, okay? You get that ATM, you get it brand new from your processor. When you're new, buy brand new. Do not buy used, guys, okay? There's another lesson on that if you want in our last weekly live. So you want internet. Your ATM should have dedicated internet service. And the reason why is because at the end of the day, you're placing it out of business. And unless it's your own business, you don't know who's on that network. Think about it. Imagine you're at Starbucks, you're at the airport Wi-Fi, and you're entering in your social security, your kid's social security, your freaking bank routing number. You know that song? You're like, man, I feel like somebody's watching me. That's what's going to happen. Somebody's going to hack into your ATM. And it's not your fault. It's because the business owner, the merchant, did not have a secure network. They left their clients on there. They left their customers. That customer clicked that wrong YouTube link that gets all the Facebook accounts hacked. And now that bad boy is inside your machine dealing with financial transactions. Big no-no. Have dedicated internet for your ATM. Your processor should provide all that. Okay. So that is number three, guys. Those are the three pillars so far. The fourth one is going to be your location, guys. This is, I mean, we saved the best for last. Your location is extremely business, extremely important when it comes to the ATM business. 
This will literally make or break your business. Okay. So what that means is this in the ATM business itself, treat it like real estate. You know, when you're always trying to find the best location next to the Whole Foods, next to that one thing, next to the park, next to the school, because the value of that location, it's the same thing with the ATM business. When I was buying real estate, guys, let me tell you a quick story. I knew about this small little city. You guys probably heard of it now. It's called Reno, Reno, Nevada. This is like one of my, <sighs> this is painful, guys. I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie. If, if you guys know about Reno, you know where I'm about to go with this. Okay. Back in 2016. This is six, no, seven years ago now. I, I heard some insider information about some companies moving to, uh, to Reno. Big name companies. I think it was Tesla, Apple, Google, like all these big centers. And Reno was kind of dead back then, okay? I knew they were going to move there. I, I heard through the, through the grapevine, as they say, right? So I got pre-approved for like multiple houses. I started shopping for houses out there. Back then, the houses, and I'm talking about like a fourplex, was like 200 grand. Right now, that same fourplex is like 900 grand, guys. I knew about these places and I did not take action. To this day, this still haunts me. It still haunts me, guys. I'm talking about multiple deals. I have them, I get the alerts still because they're on my favorites. You know, when you sign up for real estate listings and it's like, hey, this just sold again. And I would have made like $3 million on properties, guys. Blow my mind. So when it comes down to the ATM business, guys, don't make this mistake I do. Focus on location and execute, execute, execute. If you know it's a good location, imperfect action, get your bad boy in there. Worry about the, everything else later. Just get it installed, get it up and running because you're going to make your money. So when it comes down to location, you want to start and look for cash-driven locations. That could be barbershops. That could be nail salons. That could also be a grocery store. If they have lotto tickets, if they have Western Union, if they have different things like that, you want to make sure you target those locations. So when it comes down to locations, guys, make sure it is cash driven. It does not have to be cash only. That is the biggest mistake I see in the industry. Okay. Think about it. Put it this way. If it had to be a cash only place, why would there be ATMs at gas stations? Because gas stations are synonymous with ATMs, right? Whenever you stop by a gas station, you should try to find an ATM. If there isn't one there, you better put one in there, guys. And don't fret, guys, because we see this all the time. People say, I see ATMs everywhere. It's not a big deal because relationships change. How many of you guys got married to your first person you, you were in a relationship with? Some of you guys, cool. A lot of you guys are like, oh, thank God I didn't, right? You found out those skeletons in the closet. It's the same thing with the ATM business. Sometimes an ATM deployer will actually place an ATM in a location. They'll woo the business owner and then the skeletons come out bad service, that thing's empty all the time. They never make sure it's plugged in. They don't clean it out, whatever. Relationships change. Just because an ATM's at a location doesn't mean you can't go in there and be like, Mr. Steal your girl. Talk to the business owner. Say, hey, I noticed your ATM's not working. What's going on? They're going to say, man, Jeff doesn't come in here. He never fills up the ATM. He always let it run dry. I can't get a hold of him. And you say, hey, how about I place a brand new ATM there? I will make sure it's maintained. I'll make sure it's fully uh, loaded all the time. And we're all going to profit. How's that sound? Cool. The contract ends in one month. You come in there, install that bad boy. You got another location, guys. Okay. All right, guys. That is it for the four pillars of the ATM business. We are running out of time. So our next lesson, right? This is going to be really good because... The cash ATMs, they're phenomenal, okay? They are, they're absolutely phenomenal. I, I, I mean, we have all started with them. We use them as the foundation, okay? Bitcoin ATMs, though. I, if anyone's had a call with me, you understand how passionate I get about this, man. I, I start getting, I mean, it might not look like it, but I start blushing, all right? I start blushing, guys. I start getting real excited because if you know, I've been in involved in the crypto industry since 2016. That is seven years ago. Bitcoin was like 600 bucks back then. I'm just going to put it at that. And when I was buying Bitcoins, and I say plural, I thought to myself, man, I missed out. I missed out. I missed out. 600 bucks. It was like 300 bucks last year. I'm such an idiot. So trust me when I say I've been involved in crypto. So why am I so excited about Bitcoin ATMs, guys? Let me, let me, let me, let me put it this way, right? When it comes to like future thinking, I equate this to like Airbnb, Airbnb years ago when people were like, man, these guys are crazy. These fringe minority, they're talking about these, these, these single day rentals for houses. How would you rent your house out for a day? You're crazy. Long-term renters only. And now what do people want to do? They're all talking about Airbnb courses. That's the equivalent to what I'm talking about, guys. This is Amazon when they were just selling books, when they're only competing with Barnes and Nobles. This is Apple 
when I bought my iPod Touch back in the day, because iPod Touch was a big deal. Don't, don't talk smack about my iPod Touch. I still use it. I still got that old plug. Okay. So if you're excited to understand the crucial requirements of your Bitcoin ATM business, whether you start now or you start six months from now, you need to know this to research. Comment BTM below. Let's be like boy. Okay. Because I was in law enforcement. Boy, Tom, Mary. BTM, guys. I want you to actually know, <laughs> Anthony Lopez. I, I would uh, I would blush with 15 to 20 percent fees. Yeah, he, he already knows what I'm about to talk about. Just so you guys know, when it comes down to Bitcoin ATMs, you charge people like 20 percent to use that machine. You're talking thousands of dollars a month. Okay, comment BTM below. I want to get into exactly why and what you need to start your Bitcoin ATM business. But I, I need some comments. I need to know you guys are engaged with this live. Okay, so let's see right now. I see a few comments. Liz, shout out. In case you guys didn't know, it's Liz's birthday, Liz Reed. So make sure you guys comment happy birthday below to Liz because she thinks we don't know about that. Okay. It's, she turned 16 for like the 10th time in a row. Okay. <laughs> so with that being said, guys, the crucial requirements for the Bitcoin ATM business, this is phenomenal. I don't, I don't know how to like, I got to stop smiling because this is, I'm, I'm telling you right now, this is the future straight up. This is the future. I told people this years ago, like six years ago, no one listened. Now we have hundreds of people that are asking like, how do I get started? How do I get started? Okay. So when it comes down to the Bitcoin ATM business, let me explain a little bit how this works. Okay. Before I actually get into um, the crucial requirements. So a Bitcoin ATM is very simple. Okay. You'll actually see them right next to a cash ATM because they target two different actual, I say you call them avatars. Okay. And I say avatar, what that means is, and I don't talk about the movie avatar, which was good, but avatars are, we're talking about the ideal person that's going to use this machine. Okay. Cash ATMs, they target people that want quick access to cash. I'm talking about 40 to hundred dollars. Typically they want quick access, whether that's going to the club, whether that's going to the gas station to get their nails done, right? Whatever. Okay. Bitcoin ATMs are people that actually, you know, sometimes have the fear of missing out with, with actual crypto. They're not, they don't have access to banks, which is about, I think 20 to 25% of the U S right now, or they want to send money overseas. Okay. So think about this for a second. And if you actually want to know, I actually recorded an hour long podcast in Las Vegas the other week. It's, it's, I think it was on the news too. If you want to get access to this after this live, make sure you comment podcast below. Okay. Comment podcast. I have a special podcast I recorded that will tell you exactly the reason why you need to get into the Bitcoin ATM business now. Cause I don't have enough time. It took me an hour. Okay. So comment podcast below. All right. So with that being said, guys, Bitcoin ATMs, what it looks like is this. You have an actual Bitcoin ATM. And just keep in mind, we're talking about, we call it Bitcoin ATMs, but they're actually crypto ATMs. But you know when you're like, you ask for a Sandy wipe, how you don't ask for a Sandy wipe? What do you ask? You ask for a Clorox wipe. It's not because the brand is Clorox. It's just the household name. So when it comes down to crypto, some people are confused. So when they say crypto, when grandma's talking about it, who will probably use your machine, she's talking about a Bitcoin ATM or crypto ATM, but she's going to refer to it as Bitcoin because there's this, this confusion in society right now that the only crypto is Bitcoin, which is okay. That's okay. Okay. So we call it Bitcoin ATMs for your understanding, but they're really crypto ATMs. They offer multiple cryptos depending on the type of machine. So a customer will go to that machine. All right. The typical order size is usually over a thousand dollars. They go to your machine. They have a thousand dollars in cash. They put that in the machine. They get charged a convenience fee, 15 to 20% you will profit 150 to $200 based on that transaction. So do some simple math, guys. That's $1,000. One of our clients had a machine. It got, I think, one or, they just told us the other day, it was like $3,000 in like the first week. So $3,000 times, we'll just say 10%, that's $300 in profit, which is the extreme low end, okay? That's just in one day. So now you got to think to yourself, multiple transactions. If you're in certain cities, high density areas, uh, minority communities, because a lot of the times people don't have access to banking there, they use Bitcoin ATMs or they ship it overseas, the crypto. Okay. They actually send the crypto overseas. So now you're looking at typically over a thousand dollars a month in profit from your machine. Okay. Full transparency. That's whether you do it on your own or with us, right? Cause we do help with it, but straight up with Bitcoin ATMs, you're looking at um, one of our team members, he let one of his friends deploy an actual Bitcoin ATM at his location, 850 bucks a month minimum. Ridiculous, ridiculous, okay? So there is a lot of complexity to this business. So I call it the five crucial steps, okay? These are the fundamental things, and write this down, guys. These are the fundamental things you need to have your Bitcoin ATM business, okay? So pay attention. The first thing is gonna be your crypto ATM, okay? When it comes down to it, a crypto ATM, Remember what I mentioned? We always call it Bitcoin ATM. It's a crypto ATM. 
it should be have the capability to offer additional cryptos. If it doesn't, you're going to be left behind the times. That's like getting, that's like being on 3G. No offense if you're still on 3G right now, but if you ain't on 5G right now, you got problems. How are you supposed to load that 1080p freaking or that 4K YouTube video? You're going to be lagging. You hear the, the two words? You might even be hearing me right now if you're on 3G. I might be talking too fast. So you got to make sure it's a crypto ATM that has the capability to actually have multiple cryptos, okay? With that, you always want to make sure it allows buy and sell. And the reason why, guys, you, you need to pay attention. The reason why is because there's going to be a time, whether it's six months from now, a year from now, or two years from now, when there's mass adoption, okay? When there's mass adoption of these machines, because you guys are here early, you're hearing it right now. I mean, timestamp this right now. You said, get them, told me about it in January, 2023. There's going to be a time when Bitcoin ATMs are the normal. Like they're, they're just normal. People go to them every single day, like cash ATMs. Okay. But there's going to have to be a standard on the type of machine. Now there are a lot of machines out there, the majority of them. So if you think, oh, it's too saturated. No, 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 no. The majority of these machines only allow buy transactions. And what that means is a customer can go there and put money in, but they can't take money out. So here's the fatal flaw with that guys. If your machine doesn't allow buy and sell, you will be outdated in the future guys. That's like basically having a credit card without a chip reader in it, guys. When's the last time you've seen that? Imagine if you're that one company, you work with that one company that only offers the credit cards with the magnetic stripe and, and you go to a store and they're like, no, 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 we don't accept that. Where you been? So make sure your machine is buy and sell capability, guys. Because at the end of the day, you got to remember, if someone can go to your machine from whatever country, I'm talking from Japan, from uh, South America, from Africa, they come to the US, you're at a high traffic location, they go to your machine and they say, you know what? I wanna have my Bitcoin, I'm gonna scan my QR code and I'm gonna get cash out. That is gonna be a vital thing in the business, guys. And here's, here's the reason why that no one's gonna talk about. This is extremely detailed, guys. So if I lose you a little bit, just comment below, I'll clarify a little more. When it comes down to the, the US, they wanna profit off of taxes, straight up, that's just how it is. There's one thing that's guaranteed. It's death and taxes, as they said, right? So you got to ask yourself, if they're going to decide to tax these machines a specific way, what are they going to do? Are they going to tax you on the front end of buying crypto where you actually put US money into that machine and the Bitcoin can go anywhere in the world? Or are they going to tax you less on when you scan that QR code on the machine and US dollars comes out? What does that mean? Just to break it down, guys, if I put money in the machine, okay, and this, I'm talking like two years from now. So I'm talking about long-term investors here. Pay attention. Two years from now, okay, if I can put cash in here and I can send the money anywhere overseas, we're taking money out of the U.S. economy. But if I can scan my QR code and I take my, my crypto that I bought anywhere, whether that's in England, whether that's in Switzerland, whether that's in East Africa, and I'm bringing money because I have to take U.S. dollars out, so I'm putting more money in the US economy, what's favorable for the United States, guys? I'm gonna, I know you guys are gonna come to that conclusion yourself. It's going to be the buy and sell capabilities. So you need to invest in the future, guys. Don't get fooled and get a buy-only machine, okay? So that's it for the actual machines. Now you know, buy them brand new, make sure they're buy and sell, and they can offer multiple cryptos. And then you gotta focus on the second aspect. That's gonna be cash management. How many of you guys know how much money goes to a Bitcoin ATM? Comment below what you think. 1,000, 10,000, on average in a month. Comment below how much you think goes to a Bitcoin ATM. I want to see who actually gets it close. Because we're going to have a raffle coming up soon. And I want to see, like, do we have the right thinkers here? Because I want to make sure each and one of you win that raffle in the future. 50K, um, Luis, that's pretty good. Um, 15,000, Benjamin, awesome. Okay. Uh, 10,000 or is that a hundred thousand, 10,000, $5, I think a little more than $5. All right. So, uh, 20,000, 99 K sway. So the answer is it depends, but typically what you're looking at is about 10,000. We'll say to about 50,000 in cash that goes through through a month. Okay. So now you do the basic math. You're charging somebody 1500 or 15%. You're making about 1500 bucks a month or more. Okay. So of course it's going to vary, right? You got to understand it's business, but you're looking at about 10 to 50 ish thousand dollars. 
So on the higher end, imagine you have to go to your machine and somebody has put in $10,000. You got to get, get that 10K out of the machine, look around, and you got to go to the bank. That doesn't feel too good, right? But if you wait two weeks, guess what happens? Now there's 20K or maybe even 30K or 40K in cash. And you're over here like trying to hold it in your, your Pico, right? So check this out. Cash management is extremely important when it comes to the Bitcoin ATM business, okay? The way you manage that cash can make or break your business. Ideally, you're going to have a company that manages it for you guys, because at the end of the day, when it comes to the Bitcoin ATM business, you're looking at a lot of cash going to your machine. So to safely manage that, you typically want to outsource that, guys. That's what we personally do. I don't want to handle the cash. And remember this, I was in law enforcement. To me, I just don't want to be walking around with 30, 40 Gs at a time. It makes no sense to me. And then you go to the bank, you, got, you never know what will happen. They might say, you know what? We don't like you depositing that much cash. We need to start charging you money. So what you want to do, guys, when it comes to the Bitcoin ATM business, make sure you outsource that. And the main reason why is safety. But when it comes down to compliance, which is my next point, in the crypto ATM industry, we refer to it as Bitcoin ATMs, but the crypto ATMs, because you guys know now, compliance is, is, is going to make or break your business, guys. Just so you know, we just partnered with, and I mean, I'm talking about the subject matter expert when it comes down to compliance. Phenomenal. We just had a Zoom meeting with him and the team earlier today. We snatched him up. We're like, hey, you're coming to work with us. I don't care. Leave everything behind. Federal agent, law enforcement, drug investigations, everything. IRS, he knows everything. He's like, oh, you need to go over there. Jeff, talk to Jeff. Make sure you bring some coffee and he'll tell you what to do. That type of connection, guys. After speaking to him today, guys, this is what we learned. And I'm, I'm giving you sound bites. So you guys can do this, okay? So after speaking to him, he mentioned compliance shuts down more businesses than you can think of. Imagine you spend your hard-earned money to get that machine, put cash in it and all that. And then the IRS comes and says, nope, you're done. So-and-so use your machine. Oh, you should have known about this. Do you want to deal with that? How many of you guys have other jobs? Think about it. I was working in law enforcement. I was a sergeant of police. I was supervising 10 officers, including a canine officer, and including some younger officers. And they were the hardest. They were doing crazy stuff. I'm, 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 I'll leave it like that. I was busy. A lot of my team members, they had families. They're like, man, I'm working this 10 hour shift. I got to go to my daughter's recital. I got to go to the soccer game. I got to go to the quinceanera, anything. You know what I'm talking about. So check this out. Do you really want to be managing another compliance section where you got to fill out reports? You got to send information to the federal government. You got to send information to the state officials, your county. Think about that. And the IRS sends you a letter. We're doing a title 13 audit. We need every single document since you started the business. Heck no, you don't want to deal with that outsource that too. So when it comes down to compliance, if you're not compliant, you're going to have issues guys. So make sure you find a company that will completely manage that for you. It's like this. Imagine you're making a hundred thousand dollars a year and you decide I want to do my taxes myself. There's no problem with that, but because of the, the, the complexity and the scale and what you're going to be claiming more than likely just spend the 50 bucks and pay for somebody to do your taxes. It's the same thing with Bitcoin ATMs. You want to have compliance outsource. And the reason why, like I mentioned, is extremely important. You want to make sure that someone is doing it right. That's in the industry that knows exactly what they're talking about. You want them to know the jargon. You want them to know the people. You want them to know the actual compliant, the actual climate. You want them to know what's going to happen in the future because they're keeping their ears to the ground, guys. They should know more than you even think about. There's a saying Right. And uh, I think Dick Cheney said this, guys, regardless of your political opinions, he actually said this and it stuck with me years ago. He said, there's the things, you know, you know, there's the things you don't know, you know, there's the things, you know, you don't know. And then there's the things you don't know, you don't know. That third part is what will destroy your business, guys. There are things you don't know, you do not know about the Bitcoin ATM business. That's why you hire a professional to handle compliance, okay? And then the fourth thing, guys, all right? Because we're running out of time, I'm gonna get through this quick. The fourth thing is gonna be location, okay? So the location, the location is extremely important, okay? I'm not gonna say that you're, if you're in the middle of nowhere in Iowa, no offense to who was in Iowa right now, okay? If you're in the middle of Iowa, right? And the only thing you hear are cows walking around. I'm not that going to say that you won't profit there, but more than likely, there's not going to be as much traffic. Let's just keep it real. I'm a straight shooter. OK, 
Okay. So the location becomes extremely important in the Bitcoin ATM business. But here's the thing. You're targeting two different types of locations. Okay. So pay attention. Cash ATMs. Remember what you're targeting. People that want quick access to cash. Okay. And they're cash driven locations. Bitcoin ATMs don't necessarily need to be there. You want them to be in high density locations. And the rule of thumb, and this is going to be the simplest rule for you to find the best location. So write this down, guys. Okay. What I want you to do is look up places that are open on major federal holidays. Christmas, uh, New Year's Day, 4th of July. Like, Think of those locations. Where would you go right now if you needed to go there? What? 7-Elevens? What? Grocery stores? Gas station? You see what I'm getting at, guys? Donut shops? You want places that are open as long as possible and the most amount of time a week. Okay. Ideally seven days a week. So if you can go there on Christmas at 5 PM, you want to put a Bitcoin ATM there. Okay. Now, like I mentioned, you want to look at the population too. Okay. So like I said, if you're in the middle of Iowa, right. And the place is open, but it's a farm. You're going to have some problems guys. Let's keep it real. But if it's in a really good centrally located portion of a city, you got pretty good foot traffic. You have people that will use the actual Bitcoin ATM. You're going to be successful. If you don't know how to, this is what you want to do. Outsource this to a team. Make sure that team has experience when it comes to the Bitcoin ATM business. Not just anything, because if you, I'm telling you right now, in the industry, there's a lot of scams out there, straight up. That's, that's just how it is. There are people out there that will go down the list. You pay them whatever you pay them, 300 bucks, 500, whatever. And this is what they'll do. They'll go on Yelp and they'll find the first location for you and say, here you go. This is your location. And they run off with your money, guys. So make sure you work with a professional team that knows how to find locations for you, okay? They have to have established history and they need to be proven in the industry. The first thing I always say to people in any business when you're buying a car, because I just bought a new car, is you want to look at the social proof, okay? So when you're looking for locations or you're looking for a team to help with the locations, social proof. Ask them about prior clients. Tell them, hey, you know, what success stories do you have? Are there posts? Can I reach out to those people? Are they even real people? Are they bots? Are they posting photos of themselves with success? Use those indicators to make sure when you're vetting a team to find your locations, you find the most successful location, okay? And the last part, guys, is support because I, I need to get to this last lesson, okay? So support, support, support. At the end of the day, if you're not getting support for your Bitcoin ATM business, you're gonna have problems, okay? Because do you really wanna be woken up at midnight to find out, hey, you know, the, the machine's not working? So the rule of thumb is this. The supplier of your machine should be handling the support or at least the communication for the support. They should not be directly, the customer should not be directly contacting you. If you, they are doing that, you got problems. So that's one of the other things you want to outsource in the business. Okay. So you want to make sure the support for that machine is handled by another company. It's almost like, you know, the home warranties or, you know, on the back of your credit card, there's that 1-800 number. Yeah. Chase is giving you the card. Yeah. Visa or Southwest are issuing the card, but is Southwest actually answering that number? Think of yourself as that company. You don't want to answer that number. You want to have the support, the third-party support answering the number for you to make sure the machine's up and running, guys. All right? So those are the five lessons when it comes down to the Bitcoin ATM business, guys. All right? So now the final lesson, all right? How to scale your ATM and BTM business internationally. 